exactly do the retaining structures do? Let's look again at the three retaining structures. Transverse retinacular ligament, triangular ligament, and oblique retinacular ligament. None of which are a true demonstration of a ligament in the classic definition of fibers of tissue going from one bone to another across a joint. The transverse retinacular ligament and triangular ligament do not cross joints. The oblique retinacular ligament crosses two joints. So the transverse retinacular ligament. These are wispy, thin fibers and may or may not be readily available on any cadaver specimen that you uh, encounter. Often they are they appear to be part of the dorsal apparatus and it may be difficult to actually ascertain which fibers are the transverse retinacular ligament and which are the underlying dorsal apparatus. It's that overlapping fiber layer again as we've discussed multiple times. Now the transverse retinacular ligament does run somewhat obliquely as drawn here and it's technically at the PIP joint laterally and a bit distally dorsally but it's not totally distally. It covers a part of the PIP joint. Here is a wonderful image, courtesy of Dr. Bogomil, of the transverse retinacular ligament. This probe has been inserted underneath it. You can see here, this is the metacarpal phalangeal joint, PIP joint, DIP joint. We can see the dorsal apparatus. Here's the lateral band. And we can see that there are fibers that are going over and around the PIP joint clearly retaining that lateral band and that is what would prevent the lateral band from moving dorsally. Now in the normal finger where there is no PIP joint hyperextension, the lateral band does not normally move dorsally, certainly in any excess. It moves more dorsal in extension, but if the individual has the ability to hyperextend the PIP joint either normally or as a result of injury then the lateral band does have the ability to lift up and away because the hyperextension at the PIP joint provides this greater moment arm to allow it to move up Therefore, the transverse retinacular ligament becomes very important to retain the lateral band, particularly in the presence of trauma or pathology. The triangular ligament, as we have already discussed, keeps the lateral bands together just prior to their insertion uh, in the terminal tendon insertion. The triangular ligament is particularly important in the end ranges of flexion and is particularly of importance in a boutonniere injury. In a boutonniere injury the PIP joint is flexed and that flexed posture provides tension on the lateral bands to separate them in this more distal position. Over time if that deformity remains the triangular ligament fibers will adaptively lengthen, allowing a wider distance between the lateral bands, making it even more difficult then for those lateral bands to move dorsally as the finger extends. Here we're looking again at the triangular ligament that is simply a wispy group of fibers holding together in this case very distinct very broad thick lateral bands as they approach their insertion. The oblique retinacular ligament is considered by many to be insignificant and by others to be very significant. We'll discuss that information in another session and try to clarify what we know and don't know about the oblique retinacular ligament. The fact that when looking at the cadaver, the oblique retinacular ligament is often, in, in my experience, impossible to find because it's very small and it's a, 
it's just some fibers that are within other fibers and once you tease out the other fibers you don't realize that you've teased out the oblique retinacular ligament but nevertheless the fact that it is present on both sides and it runs obliquely across two joints it even though not active it does have the ability to alter the balance of motion of these two joints in relationship to one another. So it seems to me that a, a one conclusion you could draw is it does not have a significant role perhaps in normal finger motion but it can have a very significant role in abnormal motion or in, in pathology. Here, Dr. Mogamil has graciously given us a very nice image of it, although, as you can see, it's not terribly distinct and it is somewhat difficult to identify. But here is the oblique retinacular ligament. This is the PIP joint and the DIP joint with the DIP joint flexed. This is also called Landsbier's ligament. 